Good afternoon, Alexis Love Beauties and Flawless Man. Welcome back to another podcast episode. We are reading from Our Daily Bread in Mark chapter 8, verses 35 through 36. For whosoever will save his life shall lose it. But whosoever shall lose his life for my sake and the gospels, the same shall save it. For what shall it profit a man if he shall gain the whole world and lose his own soul. We've all heard stories of the wealthy people who left their riches to charity, surprising everyone. Often the real story is how their children try to overturn these wills, claiming that only a person not in his right mind could give away so much. But Mark tells us plainly that it is only those in their right minds who give it all away. To gently thread in the footsteps of Christ, we must leave our heaviest possessions and be ready to carry out others who may not know the way. Going back up to the reading in Mark chapter 8, verses 35 through 36, for whosoever shall save his own life shall lose it. I have like a thousand different examples of that from just Keep reading that script and from personal experience that can be just just flipped and explained so many different ways. The one way I look at that is holding on to something when it is time to let go of it. You're trying to save something that the Lord is trying to remove. You're trying to hold on to a relationship. You're trying to hold on to a family member. You're trying to hold on to a job, but you're not realizing that the Lord is trying to save you from something. He's been trying to break it up, but every time it break up, you're trying to come back into it. He's been trying to remove you from the job, but every time you get laid off or every time you get fired you like well let me retry to apply to this same place again for whosoever shall try to save his life will lose it there's some things that you cannot save the lord actually wants you to let them go because he know that it's going to cost you your life and when you let go of those things then that is when you save your life. But whosoever shall lose his life for my sake and the gospels, the same shall save it. Easier said than lived. But when you get to that point of obedience and you let go, it's better to cry in the car than to cry at the gates of heaven for not being obedient. So... There's some things that we have to let go of. There are some things that we have to do for the sake of God, for the sake of the gospel, like letting go of hair and makeup. That's the number one example I give. That is, you know, it's easy for me to do those things, but it's for the sake of God. I got free will. I can still do it if I want to, but it's for the sake of God, for the gospel. I'm either going to trust God with what he's doing. Or I'm either going to try to save myself. Come on, Jesus. I'm either going to try to save my beauty and not pull up online looking crazy with the braids to the back or just something that I created. I can either do my hair and makeup and, you know, pull up and look bad. I can look good. I can look cute. Or I'm either going to go through the long suffering, the endurance of whatever this process is and do what the Lord asked me to do. I'm going to do what he asked me to do because that is what's going to save my life instead of me just coming here and doing what I want to do just to look good to deliver a message. For what shall it profit a man if he shall gain the whole world and lose his own soul? There is no profit. The Lord be asking some questions that be answering in itself. There is no profit for a man to gain the whole world and lose his whole soul. The purpose of the world, the purpose of us even being here is to save our souls. The world is going to pass away. All of these things are going to pass away. We are prepping our souls. This is why we're learning. This is why we're trying to be different. This is why we're trying to be separated from the world. This is why we're trying to, you know, change different things in our life and our behavior. People say you're acting funny, but really you're trying to save your soul. The person in their testimony said, we've heard the stories about the wealthy. They ain't left $2 trillion to a person they ain't even know. And then the children, they all in there like, that was my father. I was his firstborn. I just don't understand how he can give money to somebody else. This is not right. They ain't there trying to change the wheel. Come on, Jesus. They think it's a glitch in the system because their dad and left $2 trillion to somebody else that he didn't even know. That's what we be trying to do in our life. We be trying to change the will of God. Oh, my God, I can't believe that I got to get this up. I can't believe that I got to do that. 
He said, often the real story is how their children try to overturn these wills, claiming that only a person out of his right mind could give away so much. But Mark tells us plainly that it is only those in their right mind who will give it all away. People be thinking you crazy because you're doing something different. People be thinking you crazy because you gave something away. Not knowing that you consciously did that. You were in your right mind when you did that. You were being obedient. You were actually saving your soul. They're looking like, oh my God, I can't believe she just gave that away. Didn't charge nothing, didn't do nothing. Not knowing that you are doing this for the sake of the Lord, for the gospel of the Lord to glorify God. Like our Uncle Job said, the Lord gives and the Lord takes away. So we're knowing that, okay, if I make this small sacrifice, the Lord is going to multiply that 10 times. But we don't want to think about the multiplication here. We don't want to think that, okay, if I get this car up, then I'm going to get a Benz. So that's the only reason why I'm giving that away. We don't want to think like that. We want to think like, okay, I'm going to get this car up. Come on, Jesus, because I'm laying up treasure in heaven. If I do this out of obedience, then this is going to be giving me, you know, this is going to be multiplying my soul. So we got to seek ye first. Don't do something because you're looking for just something bigger in return here on earth. We're doing this for our soul. So I'm giving this away because I'm not trying to save this. This is just a worldly position. Easier said than lived. But I know that what the Lord has me doing in the journey that he has me going on, this is multiplying my soul. And that's what I'm trying to work on. We're working on our soul. To gently thread in the footsteps of Christ, we must leave our heaviest possessions and be ready to carry others who may not know the way. People be thinking you crazy because you did something. You could have gave that to somebody you knew and you gave it to somebody you didn't know. But they're not understanding that the obedience that you have, you're putting someone else in position that don't have, that don't know, that doesn't, you know, have the opportunity. Our favorite term is what's understood don't have to be explained. And that's exactly what that's the conclusion of this podcast. What's understood don't have to be explained. You don't have to explain to people how you're trying to save your soul, how you're trying to prepare yourself for this, how you're trying to prepare yourself for that, why you stated, why you chose to do this and not do that, why you chose to invest in this and not do that, why you chose to give that up and not What's understood don't have to be explained. Whatever you have written, it don't have to be explained. Whatever it is that you're changing, you don't have to explain that. You know that you are doing this for the sake of the, the Lord, the sake of his mercy. And you know that it's not going to profit me nothing to get the whole world and lose my soul. I'm focusing on my soul. So Alexis Love, Beauties and Flawless Man, when you get time today, I encourage you to read Mark. Chapter 8, verses 35 through 36. What's understood, don't have to be explained. Whatever it is that the Lord is asking you to let go of, let go of it. Don't let go of it because you know you'll be multiplied. Let go of it because you are obedient and you are doing this for your soul.